Hi, this is DIY Just from DIY Nexus. And as you can see, we're trying something different today. I'm going to do a new filming style. And you can actually see me, not just my hands. If you think it's weird for you, it's also weird for me. So please bear with us when we make some mistakes. We're going to start a new project. And this will have multiple different DIYs. It's going to be on this 2004 Audi A4 Avant Ultra Sport. A friend of mine purchased a newer car, and he parked this one about a year ago. I inquired about buying it, and he agreed to let me check it out. We're going to show what it looked like when we picked it up to bring it back, and today's DIY will be on how to clean it up so that I feel comfortable bringing it into the garage. We grabbed a friend's truck and trailer and went over to pick up the car. Here's what we found. It's been sitting under a tree for about a year and as you can see it's really dirty. The paint's supposed to be shiny black but instead it's covered in tree sap and dirt and leaves. I mean the patina is kind of cool because the only way to get this is to let it sit for like a year outside. But we're not going for this kind of a look, we want it cleaned up. This car is a 2004 Audi A4 Quattro Avant Ultra Sport. That's a mouthful to say for sure, but breaking it down makes it a little easier. 2004 Audi A4 is basically the year make and model. Quattro means that it's all-wheel drive. Avant means that it's the wagon body style, which wasn't really popular in the US. And finally, Ultra Sport is kind of the trim level. That means it has a bunch of body changes, interior changes, and overall is the more sporty model. It's kind of like the S4, which is their sportiest model, except this one has a smaller engine. This one's a 3 liter V6. The icing on the cake though is that it has a 6 speed manual transmission. Audi only offered the Wagon Avant model with a manual transmission up until 2008. I'm pleasantly surprised that the engine doesn't look too bad other than the leaves and the dirt at the top. I knew we'd want to try and start it, so I got a replacement battery. It was under warranty, luckily. My friend Carter here is connecting it. If it starts up, it'll be a lot easier to load on the trailer. Yay, it started! I'll answer the questions I can already see in the comments in my head. Why are we trailering home an abandoned older Audi? Number one, it's got the perfect mix of features for a work car for us. Wagon so it has storage space. All wheel drive so it's good in the snow which we do get in our climate. And manual transmission which we prefer over an automatic. Number two is more obvious in my opinion though. It's an ultra sport wagon with a manual transmission. These are rare in the US, they didn't import very many. And they're just cool. We got it secured on the trailer, then it was a quick trip home to get it unloaded. We'll begin by doing an initial cleaning on the engine bay. I like to start by using a shop vac to pick up any of the loose stuff from wherever it's built up. Like in the door jams, rain trays, and around the windshield wipers. In this case, the stuff stuck on so strongly, even my powerful shop vac's having a hard time getting this stuff off. You want to try to get all the loose stuff off, so when you go to wash it, you don't end up just grinding it into the paint. Next, I like to use compressed air to further clean these areas and get off as much loose dirt as possible. This helps, but again, this stuff is so stuck on, I'm going to have to get more aggressive. I'm using one of the new Quiet Harbor Freight air compressors with a blowgun and about 100 pounds of air pressure. Now on to the wash part. We're going to use a foam cannon to pre-treat the whole car. A foam cannon uses high pressure water and soap to cover the car with a thick foam. The foam will seep into the edges around the doors and trim, around any details like emblems, and will start to soften the embedded dirt. I'll put a link below to the foam cannon and detailing stuff we use. It works great and is reasonably priced. When using a foam cannon, you don't need to get super close to the car because we don't want to use the high pressure in this case. You just want to apply the foam to all parts of the car. The wheels, the glass, 
all the cracks, underneath the bottom edge, the headlights, everywhere. Even in the grill. Disclaimer here, we're not professional detailers. This process has worked well in the past for us though. But if you have suggestions on how we can improve, please leave them in the comments below. Now we use the pressure washer with a wide nozzle to rinse it off. With a powerful pressure washer, you need to be careful on this step because you don't want to damage the paint of the vehicle. Try to keep the nozzle at least a foot away from the paint. I like to rinse from the top down. This prevents me from having to go over sections multiple times. I also like to shoot the pressure washer into the wheel wells to get some of the built up dirt there. Before we started I took off the license plate and frame so it could get cleaned underneath. I even opened the gas flap to clean in there. It's an easy spot to miss. Even at this point the car looks better. It's a shame it won't look as good dry as it does when it's wet. We could have stopped here for today, and we probably should have since we were losing daylight. But we decided to do a quick hand wash since everything was already wet and had been pre-treated. So using the two bucket method, Chris did a quick wash of the exterior, while I used some super clean, diluted in a ratio of 4 to 1 with some distilled water and a soft bristled brush to go over the wheels and tires. Here's what we used to clean the car. The soap is Chemical Guys Citrus Wash and Gloss, the same stuff we used in the foam cannon. Then two buckets with grit guards. One has the soap and water mixture, and the other has plain water. We're also using a generic wash mitt. A quick explanation of the two bucket method. To begin, you put the mitt into the bucket with the soapy water, and then basically wash the car with it. Once you've washed a panel or so, you'll come back and rinse the mitt in the clean water only bucket. That way, most of the contaminants are left in the clean water to fall down below the grit guard. Then you take your rinsed mitt, put it back into the soapy water bucket, and go back to washing the next panel. We also like to wash from the top down. First the roof gets cleaned and rinsed, then each side gets cleaned starting at the windows and working down from there. Chris also took a microfiber cloth and went over the rubber part of the windshield wiper blades. Since it ended up getting dark, we didn't really get a chance to check the car over until a couple of days later. As you can see, the car looks a lot better, but it isn't even remotely clean. There's still some moss in the body creases, there's sap on the roof. We even missed a few spots, which isn't surprising considering how dark it was. Here are some before and after shots. Now that it's much cleaner, we can see the flaws and issues that the exterior of the car has. There's water in both taillights and some damage in the paint on the left corner. There's a sticker on this quarter window. There's still a bunch of dirt under the roof rails. There's a ding on this door and it's missing the entire lower trim piece, which they call the door blade and it's specific to the Ultra Sport model. There's a ding on the leading edge of the driver's door here. 
and some kind of strange paint damage on the leading edge of this fender. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. It looks like somebody tried to pry the headlight covers out, and in fact, these aren't even painted gloss black like the rest of the car. We couldn't tell though because it was so dirty. It's more obvious on the passenger side that it wasn't painted. The overall condition of the paint is really bad. We're going to work on this in the future with some paint correction. The tow hook cover is loose and there's a little damage to the right of it. Probably the worst section on the car is this large section of bubbled rust. This was an unwanted surprise as damage like this won't just buff out. There's a long scratch on the passenger's rear door that extends all the way back to the quarter panel. I can feel it just a little bit with my thumbnail though, which means it may not come out. I think we'll be able to take some of it out though with a buffer. The bottom's also missing its door blade on this side. And there's some pry damage and a missing cover on the rear door handle. Here you can see just how dirty the windows are on the inside. Ugh. The fuel door doesn't sit totally flush for some reason. On the back, there are a little bit of marks and damage, but most of it will buff out. There's one last question to be answered. What's our goal with this project? We want to see if we can fix and clean the car and get it back on the road where it will become our new work car. And finally, we want to continue learning, share with everyone, and have fun while doing it. If you made it this far, thanks for hanging in there. As always, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Hope we didn't do too poorly on our first try. The next step for this car is to check out a problem it has with low engine oil pressure. That should be the next video. See you then. We're always looking for ways to improve, so if you have any suggestions, we'd appreciate it if you'd leave them in the comments below. If you like this type of content, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.